the organic matter produced by plants or animals 25% of oil reserves are in Saudi Arabia advantages it does not cause any air pollution and it is very cheap to install as well methanol obtained from ethanol and calorific value is too very less it consists of insulated box painted with black paint with glass lid largest wind farm is situated near Kanyakumari in Tamil Nadu it produces 380 Hello my dear students, welcome back to session 6 on the chapter Natural Resources. Today we will be learning about the energy resources. If you see the energy distribution in the world, the developed countries like USA and Canada has only 5% of world's population but they consume almost 25% of the available energy in the world. Also, what do you understand from this? We understand that the developed countries are having less population but then the consumption is of the energy is really high compared to that of the developing countries. It is said that the developed countries what energy they use in one single day is equal to the energy used by a person in developing countries for one full year. Okay. So, the amount of energy what is used by developed countries and the developing countries is here really very different and as there is you know development progressing the amount of energy resources what we require also goes on increasing and the energy resources are of different types that is renewable energy resource and non-renewable energy resource. So, two different types of energy resources we have. First, we will be learning about the renewable energy resource. So, what is renewable energy resource? Energy which can be regenerated. The energy can be regenerated and we can use this source over and over again. Then we call it as renewable energy resource. And what are the merits of renewable energy resource they have unlimited supply for example we can tell solar energy solar energy the energy which is coming from the sun we have unlimited supply isn't it so that is one of the examples i can give so here merits if you see they have unlimited supply next provides energy security you know that this is not going to get over you can use it over and over so there is a security for that and also fits into sustainable development concept that is how we are going to save this energy for our future generation it fits into that sustainable development okay and also it is reliable and the devices are modular in size also that is it is a very reliable kind of source okay and also decentralized energy production also can be done here so what exactly are renewable energy resources we learn further here the major source of renewable energy are as follows that is solar energy wind energy the wave energy or we can also call it as the tidal energy from the oceans then we have hydroelectric plants geothermal plants and then also hydro energy that's the energy from water and the biomass energy all of this is something which is renewable that it can be regained and it can be you know regenerated over and over again okay so we'll understand each one type of renewable energy resources the first one is the solar energy the nuclear fission reactions from sun produces energy that is of enormous amount so solar energy is something which has an unlimited supply you know it is going to be there the next day it is quite reliable as well so several techniques are available to collect store and use solar energy and we have 
solar cells or photovoltaic cells or it's also called as pv cells which is already there in the calculators electronic watches street lights water pumps etc we can see in the calculators in the corner there is uh, the cells which is there that is solar cells it's there in watches it's there in the street lamps etc which is already there and which we have seen as well and also there are solar batteries what is solar batteries large amount of solar cells okay they are connected in series are called as solar batteries and it is used in remote areas where continuous power supply is a problem okay so this is one Way. One more what we have is solar water heater which we can see it is some of our homes also has this solar water heater. It consists of insulated box painted with black paint with glass lid. Inside the box black painted copper coil is present. Cold water is allowed to flow. It is heated up and flows out into the storage tank. You can see there is storage tanks also in the solar water heater, isn't it? From which the water is supplied through the pipes. So there is black, it's painted with black. There is copper uh, insulation which is there. And you know, the directly the solar energy is taken up to heat up the water. And it can be also stored in the tanks so that it can be supplied further okay that is about the solar water heater which is there in most of our houses as well next is about the wind energy what is wind energy the moving air okay the air when it is moving with a speed we call it as wind and the energy can be generated by using wind also which we call it as wind energy and the energy recovered from the force of the wind we call it as wind energy and they are of two types wind mills as well as the wind farms okay so what is wind mill you can see these are the wind mills which is there when the wind blows the blade starts rotating okay and when the rotation is continuous here what happens it is con you know connected to different machines like water pumps flour mills or electric generators and thus you can convert the mechanical energy which is there which is you know because of the blowing of the wind the blades are moving and into the electric energy there okay so that is about windmills next is about the wind farms okay when large number of mills are installed and it's joined together in the definite pattern it forms a wind farm you can see many windmills are installed and they are joined together close together and in a particular pattern it is called as the wind farm and it produces large amount of electricity but the condition required here is the minimum speed for wind generation is 15 kilometers per hour that is the speed with which the the blades of the windmill has to rotate okay advantages it does not cause any air pollution and it is very cheap to install as well so that is the advantages of wind farms next we have the ocean energy in ocean energy is of two types that is the tidal energy or the tidal power and the ocean thermal energy so here Tidal energy or the tidal power is giving us a hint that the electricity is produced due to the tides what is there in the ocean. So what are these tides or how is it produced? The ocean tides are due to the gravitational force of the sun and the moon, correct? And using these tides, enormous amount of energy can be produced. The high tides is when the water in the ocean rises up, okay? And the low tides is when there is a fall of water in the ocean. So when the water is rising up, it's high tide. When it is falling, it's a low tide. Now, these tides can be used to turn the turbine in the reservoirs to get the electricity. So when high tide sea water enters into the reservoir and rotates the turbine producing electricity, again during low tide water from the reservoir enters into the sea to rotate the turbine so when it is entering also it will rotate the turbine when it is coming out also it is going to rotate the turbine to get electrical energy so next we have the geothermal energy the temperature of the earth's crust as we move down 
goes on increases between 20 to 75 degrees celsius per kilometer okay as we move down it is becoming hotter and hotter and the energy which is there because of the heat which we can you know convert that heat energy into electric energy we call it as the geothermal energy or i can also put it this way the energy utilized from the high temperature present inside the earth is called as the geothermal energy there are two types of geysers which we know that is the natural geysers and the artificial geysers natural geysers hot water or steam comes out of the ground through the cracks naturally and this can be utilized to produce electric energy or even artificial geysers where you can see here you know this is the magma which is the hottest part of the earth just above you have you know the reservoir is there there is cold water which is pumped inside okay and here it gets heated up because of the heat of the magma and the steam goes into the you know reservoir and the turbine will rotate and it produces electricity again the hot water is got back it is cooled down and the same water is sent again to the reservoir so that it can be heated up so there is a recycling of water which is happening over here so this is called as the artificial geyser okay it is not natural geyser it's the artificial geyser which is used for conversion of the heat energy into the electric energy next we have the biomass energy what is biomass the organic matter produced by plants or animals is called as biomass and this is used to produce energy we call it as biomass energy okay the sources of biomass you can see forestry crops and residues it can be agricultural residues it can be sewage it can be municipal solid waste it can be animal residue or it can be industrial residue whichever organic matter waste organic matter is there that's called as the biomass okay now the biomass energy is again of two types that is biogas and biofuels okay the mixture of methane carbon dioxide and hydrogen sulfide is called as biogas and methane is the major constituent of the biogas here what happens is whatever animal manure or dung is there it is put into the biogas plant this is the biogas plant and here anaerobic fermentation takes place which produces the methane gas carbon dioxide gas and methane gas is the major constituent and the gas which is produced it is used to generate electricity here and the excess whatever slurry is there or after the fermentation whatever is left back it is used as fertilizers okay so whatever organic waste or the animal residue or excreta is there that is put into the biogas plant and biogas can be produced the next one is about the biofuels fuels obtained by fermentation of biomass is called as biofuels it can be ethanol or methanol and you can see the biofuels are of different type and how it is used ethanol produced from sugarcane and calorific value is less methanol obtained from ethanol and calorific value is too very less then we have gasohol mixture of ethanol and gasoline that is petrol okay ethanol that is alcohol with uh, petrol when it is mixed we call it as gasohol and india is trial is going on with the use of gasohols okay then we have hydrogen fuel hydrogen produced by pyrolysis or photolysis and electrolysis of water now what is this photolysis electrolysis and pyrolysis see lysis means breakage pyro means with heat when you're breaking up you're going to get hydrogen gas or when you pass electricity into water you're going to get hydrogen gas or it can be even by photolysis using light when you're breaking something you're going to get hydrogen gas and this hydrogen gas can be used as a fuel it has got a very high calorific value non polluting one because of combustion when hydrogen is undergoing combustion it the product is water so it doesn't cause any pollution but there is a big disadvantage with the hydrogen as a fuel that is hydrogen is highly flammable and explosive it can catch fire very easily and it you know 
at a high pressure it can explode as well that is the biggest disadvantage and safe handling is required difficult to store and transport storage and transportation becomes very difficult because it's very explosive or it's very uh, flammable it can catch fire very easily okay that is the biggest disadvantage of using hydrogen as a fuel okay Next is coming to non-renewable resources. Till now we learnt about the renewable resources, solar energy, geothermal energy, ocean energy, you know, then uh, biomass energy. All of these are what? They are renewable ones. But non-renewable ones are those energy cannot be regenerated over and over again using the source, okay? So, we have coal, natural gas, oil and nuclear energy which are non-renewable energy. And coming to first one that is the coal, okay. It's a solid fossil fuel and the disadvantage is when you burn coal, lot of carbon dioxide is produced and this is the cause for pollution that is global warming also. And sulfur nitrogen produced is toxic gases during burning. So, whatever sulfur and nitrogen is there, the burning will produce oxides of sulfur and oxides of nitrogen which is really toxic to all living beings around and it causes pollution. That's the huge disadvantage with coal. Next, we have petroleum. It's a crude oil, okay, liquid consists of more than hundreds of hydrocarbons and small amount of impurities. Petroleum is refined using fractional distillation we all have studied fractional distillation in school isn't it and the world 25 percent of oil reserves are in saudi arabia this also we know and at present rate of usage the world crude oil reserves are expected to get exhausted in just another 40 years okay so by then we have to find out an alternative for petroleum next is about the LPG gas. Again, this is produced by the fractional distillation of the crude oil and cracking. Now here, LPG liquid, uh, here the liquid petroleum gas, the gas is converted into liquid by applying pressure and it can be stored in cylinders. It's actually a colorless and odorless gas. It contains a lot of butane in that, okay? But just to detect the smell, we all have uh, smelt, the uh, different smell when there's a gas leakage at home that is the LPG gas leakage at home and that smell is because of mercaptans which is added to detect the leakage of the gas okay next we have is the natural gases these are found above oil in oil wells and it is a mixture of methane and other hydrocarbons again the calorific value is high they are of two types dry gas as well as the wet gas Okay, and coming to the last one that is the nuclear energy. Dr. H. Baba is the father of nuclear power development in where? In India. 10 nuclear reactors are there present in India. It produces only 2% of India's electricity. Okay, we have 10 but then only 2% of India's electricity is from the nuclear energy. Next is about the case study. First one is the wind energy. Wind energy in India is maximum which is produced in Tamil Nadu in Kanyakumari. That is largest wind farm is situated near Kanyakumari in Tamil Nadu. It produces 380 megawatts of electricity and India generates how much? 1200 megawatts of electricity using wind energy. Next is about the hydrogen fuel car. General Motor Companies of China discovered an experimental car in which hydrogen can be used as the fuel, okay. They produce no emission, they produce only water droplets as the byproduct and you know only the vape, water vapors are coming as the uh, in the exhaust pipe and this car will become commercially available by 2010. But there are a lot of disadvantages of using this as well as we know. Okay. Thank you my dear children. Stay tuned for more updates.